Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here. I want to show you how to create your own rake brush. Now, many, many years ago, I had the the wonderful blessing of putting this rake tool into ZBrush, and it has stayed in there and is still a part of some people's life um, today. The way this tool works is, if you hover over it, you can see the base type is clay. So look right at that large kind of icon, that little pop-up. It says current brush rake base type clay. That's the algorithm that the brush uses. And the algorithm, knowing that, is important because that's going to determine the behavior. So for example, if we go to the original clay brush, that's the original clay and its base type is clay. You come in here and that's the behavior of a clay brush. But you come over to the blob brush and you see its base type is pump. Well, that's totally different. Right, And that goes further when you're working with brushes like, let's say, the inflate brush, which I can never find. I always have to press I, and then, of course, they put all the insert brushes in, so then i got to press N as in Nancy. So the inflate brush, and let's reset all the brushes because I may have been messing around with them. It shouldn't have had that focal shift. Resetting, you just go to the brush palette, you click reset all brushes, and there you go. So I'm going to go back into this and into the eyes, inflate, there you go. Now hover over that, the base type is inflate. Come over here into magnify brush, and if we hover over that, the base type is magnify, but these are really close brushes. They'll al their algorithm is different, but they're very close. The thing that's different about them or one of the things anyways, is what they see as the center of their action. So a ZBrush brush is really actually a sphere. And in, in that sphere, you've got literally the surface and all these other equations and variables and things like that going on. But for us, the important thing is the surface. And so in the inflate brush, what it does is it says, hey, the center of my action is here. I'm going to use the surface and move this thing out. In the magnify brush, it says, hey, where's the center of that? And I'm going to make sure that everything kind of swells nicely out from this. That's a massive simplification, but it gives you an idea of how one simple change, instead of using the surface, using the center of the stroke itself, can have a major uh, impact. Of course, there are settings in here for how you can kind of control where that um, center is and various things, but the algorithm determines an enormous amount of the behavior. So if we come back here to our rake brush, we add clay on, and I spent a week on the rake brush and I tried a hundred different variations I tried so much but really at the end of the day all the rake brush is is it's a clay brush with a pre-built alpha I even tried different alphas I created my own custom alphas but really it's just this simple alpha alpha 54 in fact actually it is slightly different so let's try alpha 54 or alpha 55, either one. There you go. These are defaults. So this means that if you want to create your own rake brush, technically all you got to do is go to the clay brush and you got to go in and you got to select alpha 55 and you got a rake brush. Now the cool thing about the rake brush is this special behavior that's in the clay brush's algorithm. When you press alt, it leaves behind these strokes, but these strokes you can cross over them and you don't have to worry about the topology getting all muddled because the clay brush is topology independent. So you can leave behind this kind of crazy staccato effect, which would be great for environments, right? But not screw up your topology too bad. That is not the case if you're using the standard brush. Just try that with the standard brush. Standard brush, alpha 55, I'm going to press alt, and I'm going to come in there, and you know, before long, everything's gone to hell in the handbasket. It didn't take me long to get that all screwed up. But using the clay brushes algorithm, which is just a beautiful algorithm, one of the first of its kind. I mean, in fact, um, Ofer 
pioneered this brush and other programs have picked it up and uh, and started to use it you know all for our betterment which is great but anyways this is cool now let me show you one more variation that I stumbled upon the other day let's come into clay tubes clay tubes is a really cool brush I love this. I, I had the great fortune of putting this brush in as well. This is one of the ones I got to put in. It was under a lot of guidance from Ofer Alon, who is really the father of, of digital sculpting for us. His program and his algorithms just created so much potential for you and I uh, to work. He covered uncharted territory. So clay tubes, I got to put this brush in, had a lot of fun putting it in. It's this great brush that adds this kind of staccato pattern which I used to great effect back here so for example let's come in I'm gonna take my depth I'm gonna set my depth to 5 and I have that set up on a hotkey all I did is I went to brush depth embed and I lowered it the way I like to use it is you use clay tubes to kind of put some clay down there once you've put the clay down there then you can press alt and start to adjust its shape. Do, do, do. So I go back and forth, pressing, releasing, pressing, releasing. I'm going to put in the terrace major here, so I'm going to add, z add. I'm going to put in the infraspinatus, but then I'm going to subtract the spine of the scapula, right? Then I'm going to add a little bit for that tricep, then I'm going to subtract, and then I'm going to subtract a little. I'm going to add for the long head, I'm going to subtract a touch pull across here and then I'm going to add for that scapular portion of the deltoid. I'm going to add a little for the serratus anterior for all these guys. Whatever, right? We just add, 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 click, click, click. You can hear me tapping away like a crazy monkey. Just click, click, click. But then I come in, I press Alt, and I start to clean it up a little bit. I start to establish certain form. It's beautiful the way this works especially if you come in and you have these like rendering materials like say a bronze or something where it can kind of capture the cavity uh, and add this kind of different effect so that can be really nice for really putting in tone and color and and you know just realism so let's go back into matcap gray but there's one more addition that we can do to clay tubes. So notice that clay tubes, all it is, I experimented with this one for three days, all it is is clay brush and that algorithm. That's really all it is at the end of the day. But we can kind of do some cool things with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this alpha and I'm going to export it. Let's just put it, well, we'll put it right in here. And uh, I'll just leave it like that. Then I'm going to come into Photoshop, and let's load that up. There it is, Brush Alpha, voila. Now, notice, one thing really important to notice right off the bat, uh, I just used a ZBrush hotkey. One of the really important things to notice right off the bat is that it is gray and it is 16-bit. That's the default behavior for all of the brushes, the alphas inside of ZBrush. If you go into mode, you'll see mode is gray and 16-bit. It doesn't mean that you need it to be, so you can put 8-bit images in there, but ZBrush reads it at 16-bit. So if it's not 16-bit, you potentially introduce noise or softness that you maybe didn't intend. Rarely is that a big deal. Now, I'm going to create a new layer. Why would you do this? These programs get the mind of their own. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is just real quickly, I'm going to create a couple of teeth. And I'll do that with a rectangle. I'm just going to create one tooth right now. And I'm going to fill that with black. There we go. So what I'm trying to do is just create teeth. There and there. Imagine for, if you will, let's say some kind of knife tool. And at that knife tool, you had these little notches. This is something you'll see in Richard McDonald's work. You get these little tiny notches. 
So we can kind of do that here, right? Let's collapse these and let's just go and quickly blur. I'm just going to gauge and blur them. Probably not that much. Probably that much. There we go. I'm not going to merge anything because I may want to separate them. There's not a lot of space in between there. I'm literally just going to save this. I'm going to save it so it's that exact same name. Everything's the same. Then I go into ZBrush. I'm going to go into this alpha and I'm going to say, hey, let's import and I just re-import it. It imports it as brand new, but the other one is still there. So the other one is actually, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, there it is. It's alpha 28. So even if you lose it, you can just go to alpha 28 and get it back. And that this is default. It's always there. So anyways, now we've got this. We've got this cool little modification to our clay tubes. So let's go in and see what can we get out of it. Look at that. One stroke, and then you get these little tiny things left behind. Now, there's something really important to understand. So notice that I put these alpha, these little notches on the bottom. Let me rotate this alpha. I'm going to go into the alpha palette, and I'm going to rotate it so that you can see what potential problems you might have. So I've rotated it, and now you might notice that the alpha is pointing perpendicular to my stroke. Let's rotate it again. Now, instead of being behind my stroke, it's in front of my stroke. So what that tells you is that in this alpha, if it's on the top, then it's f basically the front of your stroke. If it's in the bottom, it's the back of your stroke. Two totally different behaviors. So you'll want to orientate that um, in whichever way works for your alpha. But in my experience, having it in the back really um, works. And then if you want it the other way, you just change your stroke. But it's much more natural to have it that way. And we can come in and press Alt. Now, one thing that you'll notice, if, I, if I'm pressing Alt, I don't really, I, I lose the entire effect, actually. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. It's the little things that make a difference. It really is. So I'm taking these. And uh, I'm just going to delete these two. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. And I'm going to now spread these out a little bit more. Like that. Let me get that center one, and I'll just move that one over. There we go. Merge them down. And let's see if this creates any noticeable difference. Sometimes, save it. Come in here to my alpha. I just import it again. I'm not going to bother changing the name. Now, let's undo this a little bit. See if we get a similar stroke. There we go. Press Alt. Now, the effect, very subtle here that that did, but I have a little bit more tooth. These are the kinds of things that you start to really experiment with just to get a subtle effect, or not, because it's pretty cool just like this. You get to kind of come in and, and add these guys up. The only thing I would really say we could add and that might give us a bit of a different effect is if we turn lazy mouse on and we set lazy step to 0 0.05 and lazy radius to 1. Then we get a slightly different smoother behavior. So I'm just undoing so we can see what that same area does with these different settings. There we go. And then also dividing the model so that you've got the polygons to really notice that is fairly useful. So after a while, you end up building this form up. And you'll see we still get some of that, that rake quality in there. Nothing major. But it's pretty neat to see working on that kind of um, 
that level of form and level of texture in there. I just really enjoy it. So when you're done and you're ready for something like this, there's it's a two-part process that I really advise. Number one, don't just save your brush, clone it. That'll mean that you won't have to reload it or initialize ZBrush or reset brushes to get it back. So you clone it, then you save as. And when you save as, make sure you go to Pixel Logic, you go into Z Startup, you go into Brush Presets, and you load it in there. That's the most important thing for you. Now, how about one more tip? Once you've saved the brush, you can come into, say, like a Sphere 3D, turn it into a poly mesh, divide it, and then just come in here and make a couple of strokes. Like that. And you notice how Clay Buildup has a stroke. All of these brushes have a sphere with some kind of behavior. So you just do this. You come in and say, uh, go to your Klingon tool, the MRGBZ grabber. <laughs> Check for, just uh, grab the canvas. Then you go into texture. You export this. Come back to our model, wherever that model is. Draw it on. Edit mode, control N, and then with that brush selected, you can now go into the brush palette, select icon, grab it, and there you go. Save it. Where is it? Make sure you grab it because it tends to add names or iterations on it. So I want to replace it. And now that will forever be in my ZBrush when I'm ready to start it and start working with that kind of texturing. Hope you enjoyed. Check me out at ZBrush Workshops. Got a lot of stuff going on over there. Uh, RyanKingsline.com. Make sure you uh, sign up for more information over at uh, Facebook slash forward slash Ryan Kingsline. We'll go from there. All the best. Happy ZBrushing.